Okay, so we're going to start seated, but remember, we're always habitual, so cross the opposite direction and just allow the sitting bones to connect, maybe push back a little bit. Crown to the ceiling, get the core active, so bottom ribs toward your spine and then up toward your heart so that everything starts lengthening through the spine. And then shoulders back and down, away from your ears always, and crown toward the ceiling. And just take a few moments to focus inward, finding your yoga frame of reference, being that internal awareness. And don't forget to breathe. So belly moving, not crunching those abs together, but just letting the belly move, but still active through the core. As you exhale, release any tension. And then kind of focus on the bottom ribs. You can put your hands on your knees or floor or in your lap. And then we're going to move those bottom ribs around. So just kind of move them in that circle. See if you can keep your hips and shoulders pretty much even as you just move through that midsection. And just kind of activating the circulation and then stop and go the opposite direction with your circles. And then again, releasing back to neutral, stretch up through the crown, bring those ribs back and round forward into the forward bend. So really push the spine back toward whatever's behind you. And then as you inhale, lift your heart, look up toward the ceiling, shoulder blades toward your waist, and just lengthen through your whole spine. So a few times through that forward bend, backward bend, round forward as you exhale, and round up into the back bend as you inhale. So feel your whole spine going through that range of motion as you move between the forward and backward bends. Really let that whole spine get moving. And then again, coming back to neutral. <clears throat> One hand to the floor, the other arm out. Palm toward the ceiling and arm over your shoulder. Slide over into your side stretch. Remember, keep the hip you're leaning away from down, sitting down, still connected. Arm by your ear, reach out through your head and fingertips, and then just keep sliding the hand out or bring your elbow down if you like a little extra lengthening through that side. And then inhale back up, releasing your arm. Switch your legs around and we'll go to the other side. So hand down, arm out palm toward the ceiling, and then bring it up above your shoulder. Slide over to that opposite side, stretch out through your fingertips and head. And again, slide further or elbow down. Keep the hip you're leaning away from, remember, still sunk into that sitting bone. And then again, sliding up, exhale, and and then looking at your legs, see which one's in front or on top, or just pick one and bring your opposite hand to that knee for our twist. Stretch from the sitting bones up so the spine opens. Arm in front at shoulder level. Keep looking at that hand. And exhale, turning hips, ribs, and shoulder, along with the whole body moving into your twist. Bring the hand down to the floor, bring it close to your body, stretch up through the whole spine, sitting bones down, and then exhaling, lift that one sitting bone behind you, and twist a little deeper. So this hip comes up behind you, ribs and shoulder turning as you deepen the twist. Oh, remember, personal practice, whatever's right for you. And then arm coming up and following it back to the center and release. And just feel that twist energy moving through your spine. And we'll switch the legs and twist to the opposite direction. 
So again, sitting bones are down. <clears throat> a little bit behind you, stretch up through the spine, hand to the opposite knee, other arm out at shoulder level. Stretch up through the spine, hand at shoulder level, moving around. Just follow it with your whole body turning. <clears throat> and bring your hand close to you on the floor. Stretch up, exhale, and deepen the twist. Remember, this hip <clears throat> behind you doesn't stay down. Don't want to overdo that lower back. You want to twist the whole body. So hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turns, not just your neck. Keep breathing, keep relaxing, and go as deep into the twist as you like. And then the arm comes back up to shoulder level, and you follow it around to the center, and release. And just once more, just observe that inner energy movement. Take a few moments to breathe. And then put your hands cupped around your knees. Kind of pull the ribs back, rounding forward. Bring your forehead down toward the floor. And then we're gonna roll over to one side. Look up, inhaling chest toward the ceiling, and then exhale over to the other side and back around to the front. So circling, keep it low as much as you can, getting that pelvis working in that circuit as you go all the way around each time through that range of motion. And then the next time you're forward, pause. And of course, we're gonna balance and go the other way. So going to the opposite side, lifting your heart at the back, exhale and coming forward at the front. And again, just a few times through that circuit. Keep breathing. Just kind of activating that lower back since we're going to be focusing there today. And then pause at the front and sit back up and relax into your upright position. And then we're going to bring the hands over to the side and come first into table position, and then hands to the sides of your mat and roll all the way on the floor on your belly. Head to one side, hands palms up at your sides, toes toward each other slightly, just relax on your belly in rest in crocodile. And as always, remember, half the time, have your neck turned to the other side, head turned toward the other side, so your neck gets balanced as you're in that position. So we're gonna start with our forehead on the floor and bring your hands, palms down on the floor next to you with your fingertips right about your temple level and your forearms, elbows in toward your sides. And then inhaling, face to the front, bring your crown up toward the ceiling. And tuck your chin back slightly toward your chest so that neck gets a good stretch. And then heart forward and up maybe a little bit higher into the cobra sphinx position. So think about your ribs staying on the floor, the hips relaxing down, feet are about hip width apart, just lower body doing nothing at this moment. Now we're coming into that upper body cobra and breathing. And then exhale and come all the way back, forehead toward the floor. So we're gonna do a sequence now and that sphinx cobra upper body position is our starting upper body position. And we're gonna do different things with the lower body. So keep your feet about hip width apart. Start with your forehead on the mat. And then inhaling, face forward, crown up. Tuck your chin back toward your chest. Pull your shoulder blades toward your waist. Lift your heart. And you come up only as high as feels comfortable for you. If you get into your lower back too much, just bring your upper body slightly further toward the floor so you're comfortable there. Take a breath and remember the hands aren't really supporting you. They're just positioning things. So just let your spine support. Stretch your legs out behind you. And then we're gonna bend the right knee, bring the foot up toward the ceiling, flex the foot, 
kind of an inner rotation so that at the top of the thigh, so that bottom of your foot goes straight up and relax. And then exhale, bring the foot back down and lower your upper body. Take a moment there, just reposition anything you need to. And we're gonna come into the upper body again. So inhaling, face forward, crown up. Pull the elbows back, chest forward and up, chin slightly in, crown high. And take your left leg and bend the knee. Again, a little inner rotation, flexing the foot and just maximize for your body. You'll feel it a little bit in your lower back. And exhale, foot back to the floor and release your upper body. So we're going to go one more on this version. So we're going to use both feet together this time. So inhaling, face forward, crown up, shoulder, shoulder blades down, chest forward and up, chin in, upper body position. Stretch those toes back, little inner rotation at the top of the thighs as you bend both knees and flex the feet so they're straight up to the ceiling. Lift your heart maybe a little higher and then exhaling, release the legs and release the upper body. As your forehead touches, bring your hands back next to your shoulders and push back into child's pose and relax. So each time we do a version, we're going to come back into child's pose for a nice little forward bend stretch through that lower back. So the closer you keep the knees as you come into child's pose, remember, the more you're gonna get that stretch across the lower back. So that's just counteracting all the back bend work we're doing. And then bringing your hands again to the front toward the sides of the mat, pivot up and roll your whole body down and back into resting crocodile. So each time we do this, we're gonna do a slightly different thing with the legs and it'll get a little bit incrementally more challenging in your lower back as we go. So remember, do what's right for your body. Don't ever do too much so that you're straining through the lower back. You can always have your upper body less high or you can go back to one of the previous leg versions so that it's not so intense. So again, forehead to the floor, bring those hands near your head, palms down, Elbows into your side, pull back, and inhale, face forward, crown up. Shoulders and shoulder blades down, chest forward and up, crown to the ceiling. Upper body starting position. Similar thing to last time, we'll roll those thighs in, stretch the right foot back, bend the knee, flex the foot, and come into that same flexed position. This time we're gonna go a little higher, a little harder, so lift your knees slightly off the floor and foot straight up toward the ceiling. Only as high as it wants to go, don't overdo it. And then bringing the knee back down, release the foot to the floor and exhale your upper body down. Get repositioned and we'll do the other foot. So again, inhaling, coming up into your starting position. Chest forward and up, chin in, crown high, and stretch the left foot back, bend the knee, flex the foot, and again, a little inner rotation at the top of the thigh to knee. Make sure the foot is straight up as you lift the knee slightly off the floor. Take a breath, maximize that chest forward and up if you love it, and then knee down, foot to the floor, and Exhale, upper body back, all the way down. Take a moment there, feeling what's going on with your body. And it's time for both feet together. Remember, you don't have to do anything more than your first position if you don't want to. Inhaling, face forward, crown up. Elbows back and in, chest forward and up. Lengthen through your spine. Come up only as high as you want to be. Inner rotation at the thighs, stretching back through the toes, bending your knees, feet to the ceiling, flexing your foot. And then again, a little bit more intense, so don't be too hard on yourself. 
Lift those knees slightly higher toward the ceiling. And then knees back down, feet to the floor. And exhale your upper body down. Hands under your shoulders. And again, press back into child's pose. Get a good stretch. Take a breath. Exhale, relax. And we're going to do a new version. So hands to the side of the mat. And again, come back onto your belly. Rest in crocodile. Getting things just relaxed. Feet hip width apart. Forehead to the floor. Elbows into your side. Hands near your head. Palms down. Inhale, face forward, crown up, chin in, chest forward and up, crown to the ceiling. Maximize or minimize, remember, just do what's right for your upper body position. You can be as close to the floor as you need to be. Both legs stretch back. We're going to focus first on the right leg. Keep the knees straight this time and just raise that leg off the floor keeping both hips down. Keep reaching out through the base of the toes and chest forward and up, crown high. Exhale that foot to the floor and release your upper body down. Take a moment there, breathe. Just relaxing and get ready for our second leg. So once more, inhaling, face forward, crown up, chin in, chest forward and up toward the ceiling. Maximize or minimize your upper body position for what's right for you. Stretch the left foot back. And again, keeping that knee straight, lift, keeping both hip bones on the floor. So only as high as it wants to go. Keep breathing, chest forward and crown up. Exhaling that foot to the floor and releasing your upper body back down. Take a moment, reposition. Get those feet hip width apart. And again, inhaling, face forward, crown up, coming into your upper body starting position. Feet are stretching back. We're keeping both legs straight and we're doing that lift with both legs, only as high as your body likes to go. So feet reaching back through the base of the toes, chest and crown reaching away. Keep breathing. And when you're ready, exhale those legs. And again, exhaling, release the upper body. Hands under your shoulders. One more push back into child's pose. Get a good stretch through that back. Now we're going to do that same starting position. And we're going to go a little bit further. So remember... Personal practice, only do what's right for you. If that first version was plenty, just go back to it. You never have to go any further. So hands to the sides and again into corpse or resting crocodile, getting ready for our new version. Head to the side, shoulders down, hips relaxing. Just take a moment to breathe. And then forehead to the mat. And hands in near your head, elbows toward your ribs. Inhaling, upper body starting position, crown to the ceiling, chest forward, and chin in. Shoulder blades always toward your waist. Stretch those feet back. We're going to bring one foot up, stretch it out, legs straight. Exhale, and we're going to stay in that upper body position as we bring that foot back down and get the left leg ready and bring it up. Stretch it out and bring it down. Take a breath, exhale back down. And then we're going to again, inhale, coming up. Shoulders and shoulder blades toward your waist, chest forward, crown high, starting position for your upper body. Legs hip width apart, stretch both feet back. And again, knees straight as you come up with both legs coming into that hip joint, still pressing down. 
So lift your legs only as high as they want to go. And exhale the feet down. Release the upper body and relax. So that was pretty much the same thing we just did. Now we're going to go one step further. So inhaling, face forward, crown up. Upper body starting position. Focus on that chest forward and up. Stay lower toward the floor if you want. And again, legs are straight, hip width apart. Bring both feet up. Stretch back through the base of the toes. That's enough. Stay there. You don't have to go further. But if you want to, bring your feet out about four to six inches toward the sides. And again, chest forward and up, crown to the ceiling. Bring those feet back in, hip width apart, and lower the legs. Take another breath. And exhale the upper body down. Hands back by your shoulders. And again, press into child's pose. Take a moment there. Knees together for that good stretch across your lower back if you want. Take another breath. Just relax. So we're going one more. Now let's do a little variation first. Come on up into your table position. So we're going to take a moment there. Remember, wrist, elbows, and shoulders lined up, knees under your hips, feet straight back. Get those bottom ribs up, supporting that lower back that we've been working so hard. Chest a little bit, maybe down toward your thumbs, keeping that upper back not hunched up. And then focusing on that lower back, round forward. So sitting bones come down, just lift those lower back vertebrae up toward the ceiling, tucking your chin, top of the head down toward the floor. And then inhale, coming back to neutral. And sink that lower back down, just a gentle little stretch in the back bend. And then same lower body point, lift that lower back up. And again, round forward. And just a few times going through that range of motion into the lower back sinking down and the upper back or the lower back rising up. And just as much or as little as you want through that cat sequence, but focused in that lower back area just to keep that circulation really moving. And then again, sink back hips toward your heels, and relax just a moment. And of course, one more version. So hands to the front, and back onto your belly, and relax in crocodile. Sink those hips down, feet hip width apart, and face to the floor. Arms into that upper body starting position. And inhale, face forward, crown high. Tuck your chin back in, chest in. Heart forward, crown up. Upper body starting position, only as high as you want to be. And feet are hip width apart. We're going to do both legs together, coming into what we've already done. So keep stretching back through those feet as you raise both feet together. Stretch it out and back. And then exhale, feet to the floor, and release your upper body. We're going to do the same thing we did as our start, uh, as our ending position last time. So again, inhaling, face forward, crown up, upper body starting position. Keep that chin tucked as you bring the chest and crown out and up. Shoulder blades towards your waist, feet hip width apart. Stretch the legs back, knees straight, legs up off the floor. Stay there if that's where you want to stop, or bring the feet out six inches or so, four to six inches, and then back in, and release. And again, exhale back down. Now, if that's enough for you, stick with that version. Otherwise, we're going to go one step further. So bring your feet out to the edges of the mat, about four to six inches further apart than the hip width 
that you started up. And then inhaling, face forward, crown up. Pull those elbows back and in, chest forward and up, crown to the ceiling. Coming into your upper body starting position, stretch the feet back and knees straight and lift the legs up off the floor. Keep reaching out through the base of the toes. So you can be feet hip width apart or that little bit wider position. And then again, exhaling, feet to the floor, upper body down. Now, if that's enough for you, stick with that version, but we're going to do one incrementally, just more challenging version. So, again, face to the floor, crown, rotating up, coming into your upper body starting position. Stretch back through the feet, either hip width if you want to be there, or a little bit wider. And lift the legs with the knees straight, coming into that raised leg position. Stay there or go back down whenever you need to. Or if you want to maximize, feet again a little further out to the side. It's going to be more intense. Don't go there if you've already maximized for your body. And then feet back to your starting position. We'll lower the legs. Exhale and face to the floor. Bring your feet back hip width apart if they aren't. Hands under your shoulders and back into child's pose. Take a moment there and relax. And then inhaling, sit up on your heels. We're gonna come up and if you've got a mat or a pillow, you can put it under your knees. We're gonna come up into kneeling position. So as you get the knees, hips, and shoulders lined up with the feet straight back or a little bit toward each other, your choice. Bring your hands onto your lower back, fingertips toward your hips, and palms pressing into your lower ribs. Rotate those elbows toward each other, and then just rotate looking up toward the ceiling. Keep those hips right over your knees, and bring the shoulders back over your heels. So just breathe a moment there in that back bend, supported with the hands on that lower back. And then chin towards your chest, exhaling, and again, coming all the way over into child's pose. Take a breath, just relax. And then releasing the mat if you, or pillow if you have it under your knees. We're going to bring the legs out in front and to the end of the mat. Coming into staffed position with that core active, spine nice and straight, shoulders down, and then use the core for support as you roll on through the back. So just coming into corpse position, just take a moment there for a reclined integration, relaxing your body into that surface beneath you. We're going to do a couple of twists. So bring your arms <coughs> out to T position. Sitting bones toward your heels. <coughs> Sorry. And bring your heels in near your hips, feet flat, knees straight up. Slide those sitting bones again toward your heels, getting your lower back connected. And bring your feet up off the floor. Hands can be palms up or down for this version. It's a little more stable in your shoulders with the palms down, your choice. Keep the feet more or less together and roll the knees to one side, right at hip level. Turn your head toward that opposite arm and relax. So keep your shoulders and shoulder blades down on the floor for that middle back twist. Turn your head for the neck and shoulder twist and get those knees as far toward the floor as they want to go. Or if you love the lower back twist, you can bring your knees up a little further toward your elbow and maximize that lower back look. So your choice, how far you go, remember personal practice. And then heels toward your hips and roll onto your back. Feet to the floor and reposition if you need to. And then feet back up off the floor and knees above your hips. 
And we're doing it to the other side, balancing the body in that twist. So move your knees over to the opposite side, right at hip level. Hands, palms up or down, your choice. Get those shoulders and shoulder blades connected. Turn your head toward that arm there behind you. And again, maximize or minimize, staying there. Head turning for the upper back, neck and shoulder. Shoulders down for that middle back. And knee toward your elbow if you like that lower back to be maximized or not. Remember, you can have your feet on the floor if your knees don't make it all the way down. So maximize or minimize, twist your personal practice. And then heels back towards your hips and rolling onto your back. Bring your feet to the floor and slide them out. Take a moment there in T position, feeling that twist energy. And we're gonna do one more twist for the lower back. So sliding the sitting bones toward your heels again, bend your right leg at the knee and put the foot on your left thigh. We're gonna roll all the way over to the left side. So bring your hands on the floor in front of you together and bring your right knee all the way over to your floor so that you're totally on your left side. Take your left hand on the right knee and your right arm right above your shoulder, palm open, facing the direction your body is facing. Palm open and lower the back of your hand right at shoulder level. So not up toward your head, not down toward your hip, but straight out and let it come toward the floor as you turn looking at it. So your hand may not make it down. Don't worry about that. That's your middle back twist. Keep the knee on the floor. That's your lower back twist. If you need to raise that knee off the floor because you've got lower back issues, feel free to let it go. And turn your head toward that arm behind you for your neck and shoulder twist as much or as little as your body would like. So remember, if your arm is in the air, that's fine. Just let it be. Gravity will work with you as your ligaments release. So just kind of breathe deep. Exhale. Letting those ligaments get a good release as you exhale. And your hand may release further toward the floor when it's ready. So just allow that to happen as much or as little as your body wants. Remember, it's always a personal practice doing what's right in your body as far as your body wants to go. The longer you hold this position, the more likely your hand, if it's up, is going to release further toward the floor. So when you practice on your own, you can hold that position much longer letting everything breathe. But for right now, we're going to roll onto our back, letting go of your knee, and we're rolling back into T position so we can twist the other direction. So take a moment there, just feel that twist energy along your spine, getting ready for our final twist. So sitting bones towards your heels, lower back connected, left knee bending, and left foot on the right. Roll all the way, hands together on the floor in front of you to the right side. Don't forget, keep your head on the floor. Don't overwork your neck. Get a pillow or blanket under you if you need to. And knee to the floor. Right hand on your knee. Left arm above your shoulder. We'll look up at it, palm open. And again, right at shoulder level, bring that hand behind you toward the floor. Coming as deep into your twist as you like. The more the knee is down in that front leg, the more your lower back is in the twist. The more your hand goes toward the floor, your middle back is in the twist. And the more your head turns to look that direction towards your hand, the more your neck and shoulder are in the twist. Remember, personal practice to do what's right for your body. Take a few breaths, exhaling, relaxing, deepening into the twist as much as you would like. And just exhale any tension. And as always, when you're ready to release, just letting go of the knee 
rolling out to your back and sliding the foot down. Moving your arms near your sides into corpse position, hands, palms up, slightly away from your hips. And just let your whole body sink into corpse position. Allow everything to relax. And to focus on that lower back pelvis area, breathe into it. Exhale, any tension there. Lots of work in that lower back sacrum area today. So just make any adjustments you need, letting that lower back and pelvis relax. Shoulders down, shoulder blades toward the floor, letting that chest open a little higher toward the ceiling. Relax your legs, your hips, your torso, arms and shoulders. Relax your neck and throat, your jaw, your face, your scalp, your skin, your whole body. Just let it soften and sink deep into that surface beneath you. And just let it go, letting Mother Earth support you. Everything relaxing completely. As your body relaxes, just allow thoughts of your body to release from your awareness. And know that as you release those thoughts, other thoughts will come to your mind. Just let those thoughts go as well. At this moment, there's no need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts drift away as easy as your breath. With each breath, just deepen into that earthbound connection, letting your mind float more easily as you breathe out the thoughts. No need for awareness of your body. No need for awareness of your thoughts. Just let your awareness completely release both your body and your mind. Let it turn inward. Focus only on that peace within. Feeling your body with peace. Feel your mind with peace. Just take a few moments to be peace. If you can relax longer today, just feel free to relax as long as you like. If it's time to return to the moment, getting ready for the rest of your day, just breathe more deeply, drawing energy and awareness back into the moment, the room, your body. Just breathing more deeply, stretching more fully as you become ready to do so. When you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, press your sitting bones toward your heels, bring those heels in, pressing down through your back as you bring your feet up onto the floor, or the knees toward your heart. Wrap your arms around either your knees or your body, however feels good for that appreciative yoga hug. And let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today. 
and the work your body does for you every day. When you're ready to release that, <clears throat> bring your feet back to the floor, roll over to the side, sit back up, and just get ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.